this video is going to cover the 8-3 warm-up and then a couple of notes about your 8-1 to 8-3 quiz. So for number one on the warm-up, it says write the first five terms of the geometric sequence. It gives you the first term is a sub 1, and then it gives you r, which is your common ratio, is negative 1 half. So with our geometric sequence, we would take that a 1 and multiply it times the ratio. So 6 times negative 1 half would be negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 1 half would be positive 3 halves. And then 3 halves times negative 1 half would be negative 3 fourths. And negative 3 fourths times negative 1 half would be positive 3 eighths. So then when you list the first five terms, you want to be sure to include a sub 1, which is the one that was given to you. So my five terms are 6, negative 3, 3 halves, negative 3 fourths, and 3 eighths. Number two says write the first five terms of the geometric sequence, then find the common ratio and write the nth term of the sequence as a function of n. So this time it's giving to you as, a, as recursive, but it is also geometric because you're multiplying the same thing every time. So if I were to multiply a sub 1 times 1 half, I'd get 120 times 1 half, which is 60. And then 60 times 1 half, 30. 30 times 1 half. 15 and 15 times 1 half, 15 halves or 7 and a half. So the first five terms start with 120, 120, then 60, then 30, then 15, then 15 halves. That's the first part. Then it says to write the nth term of the sequence as a function of n. So this time I'm looking for my equation. Remember that when you're dealing with geometric, a sub n would be a1 times r to the n minus 1. So a1 is 120. The ratio is 1 half, and I'd raise that to the n minus 1. That's your equation for the nth term as a function of n. Then number 3 says, using formula from number 2, find the 10th term. So I want to use, it. I want to find a sub 10. So 120 times 1 half to the 10 minus 1, which is going to be 120, 1 half to the 9th power. So now you can use your calculator to help you here, but you need to make sure that you keep it exact so you're keeping it as your fraction. So I would do 1 half to the 9th. So this is 120 times 1 over 512. And then I would reduce that 120 so if I start reducing this, let's say just by 2, this would be 60, 256, and then again, this would be 30, this would be 128, and then again, 15, and 64. So the answer here for A sub 10 would be 15 over 64. And again, you'll do this on your quiz. You want to keep those answers exact. Okay, looking at question four and five here, this uh, four says find the sum of the finite geometric sequence. So first of all, it's geometric, which means I get to use my summation um, formula from geometric, and then it's finite. So this is the one that is a sub one times one minus r to the n over one minus r. So the first thing you want to find is a sub 1, and that's the number that's in between the or next to the number being raised to the power. So it's not the one that's being raised. That's your r. So a sub 1 here is 12. And then r is the one being raised to the power. That's negative 1 half. And then n, if I bottom number is 1, then n is the top number, which is 4. So I'd get 12 times 1 minus r, which is negative 1 half raised to the n over 1 minus r, again, negative 1 half. And then i got to simplify it. So negative 1 half, I'm going to write the 12 on the front, 1 minus this 1, or sorry, 2 to the 4th power is 4, 8, 16. So this is minus 1 over 16 over 1 plus 1 half. 
And then you need to give these like terms or like denominators. So that's 16 over 16. This is 12, 15 over 16 over, and then two, and this is three over two. And then I'm gonna keep change flip. Three goes into 15 five times, two goes into 16 eight times, and I'd get 12 times five eighths, and then four goes into 12 three times into eight twice. So this is 15 halves. And again, you need to make sure you're keeping these numbers exact. You do not want to use your calculator to get a rounded number. That will be marked wrong on your quiz. All right, number five says find the sum of the infinite geometric sequence. So it says it in the title, but also when you look at your summation, you should see that there's an infinity symbol at the top. And this is geometric. The first thing you have to do is, is ask, can you even do it to start with? So you have to look at that R, this time it's one third, and the absolute value of that, which is still one third, has to be less than one. This does meet that uh, criteria, so I know I can find the infinite sum. And then the equation for the infinite sum is a sub one over one minus R. So a sub one is six, one minus one third, I'd get three thirds minus one third, six over two thirds, and then keep, change, flip. Two goes into six three times, and this is nine. Okay, so then let's talk about your quiz. So your quiz is covering sections 8.1, to 8.3. In 8.1, we talked about our generic series and sequences and sum. So you could have just been identifying what the sequence is. You could have been finding the first five terms. You could be finding a specific term, that kind of thing. Um, and then you can find a sum that is something that's not arithmetic or, um, or geometric. So let's say it was three, let's say this is i to the third, and this is i equals one, and this is four, something like that. I would take plug in one, get an answer, plug in two, plug in answer, get in, plug in three, get an answer, plug in four, get an answer, and then add them all together. And then remember that if the number on the bottom changes, so let's say that this is two, now I'm plugging two, then three, then four. The bottom is always the first one, the top is always the last one, and then when we sum, we add those all together. We also talked about factorials in 8.1. Uh, remember something like if I had 10 factorial over five factorial, I would break the 10 down until I hit five, until I hit the five, and then I would take and multiply out what's left. Then we talked in 8.2 all about arithmetic. sequences and sums. So the equations that were introduced in this one is a sub n was equal to a sub one plus d times n minus one. So that's how we find the nth term in an arithmetic sequence. And then we also found the sum by doing n over two, the number of terms over two times the first term plus the last term or n over two a sub one plus a sub n. And again, that's only for arithmetic. And in arithmetic, we talked about the common difference, which is D. And that's the number that you are adding to each term to get the next term. And then we talked in 8.3, what was just in the warm up, which is your geometric. Geometric, you're multiplying the same number times each term to get to the next. This time we use R, that's the common ratio. It's the number that you'd be multiplying. And to find the nth term when you're, when you're dealing with geometric, it's A sub one times R to the N minus one. And then we had two sums. We had a finite sub, which is A sub one times one minus R to the N over one minus R. And then we had an infinite sum, which is a sub one over one minus r. 
And that's the one that you can only do if the absolute value of r is less than 1. So it has to be a fraction in between 0 and 1. It can't be bigger. If, that, if it is bigger, then you just simply say that it can't be done because r is bigger than 1. Or the absolute value of r is bigger than 1. Okay, and then keep in mind that you can use a scientific calculator. And you can use the rest of the today's um, class to work on the quiz review in which some of the answers are there and the rest will be posted by the end of today.